Frog had just enough time to marvel at his sparkling reflection stark against the moonlight before he crashed straight through it into the cold pools of the east wood. The bubbles rolled over his smooth belly, and for one wild moment he thought he might start giggling despite his downturned heart. The galugs that peacefully soaked in the pools spared him a quick curious glance before returning to their conversations, stirring words leisurely in the steamy night air. A galug tad preened at his friends on the edge of the upper baths, an extra leaf sprouting from his head tuft while the water below him glowed and rippled. Frog looked like them, but he was very small, and unfortunately, he had no words to stir up the magic in the water. Frog hopped onto the pool's edge and peered up at the glowing tubs that wrapped around the old east tree, a glimmer of wist in his eye. Galugs of all ages were enjoying the hot water and steam, their legs stretched out, their bellies turned up. Frog was so cold. The lower pool wasn't for something non-magical like him, but it was the only one cool enough to not boil him alive. He wasn't as adaptable to heat as the bath's usual clientele. Imps skittered here and there, retrieving towels and sap platters and cups of tea. A particularly haggard imp stopped to blink at him. But after a beat, it continued on its way up the mushroom stairs into the higher, steamier parts of the tree. Frog hopped up after it without thinking, but by the third mushroom, the steam started to lick at his skin. By the fourth, his nostrils were filled by the heady, moist air. By the fifth, Frog's toes started to sting. But Frog was so cold still. If he could dip into the upper pools just once, Maybe he could jump out before he boiled, and maybe he would finally stop feeling so cold. But before Frog could take another hop, he was scooped up by a twiggy hand and huddled against a cloth hung over warm bones. Old Wisp had served these pools for eons, commanding the imps and providing for the galugs and anyone else looking for a good bath and magical rejuvenation. Despite being an imp themselves, Old Wisp had the respect of the whole forest. Their flesh had long fallen off, leaving dark holes where jeweled imp eyes used to sit. Their great antlers were curled over the place their mouth used to quirk when the elder galugs at the red saunas would cut the steam with their wit. The blank skeletal face that turned toward him, though, was nonetheless quite knowing. You'll boil, little frog. Frog understood. You're a very determined fellow. Frog knew what he wanted. You've come here before. I don't see many frogs interested in my pools. What is it you're trying to accomplish here? The frog was so very cold. Little friend, and I hope you don't mind me calling you so, but anyone so sure of themselves has a friend in me. I like folks who go out and try. Doesn't matter what it is they're trying. But enough to win my admiration to be determined to put action to thoughts. Old Wisp spoke a lot for someone with no mouth. The point is, little friend, that I see you need the service of my pools. But my saunas and upper tubs are much too hot for such a little frog, you know. Frog knew. But the fact remained. Frog was cold. Perhaps just a dip. No, no, friend, it just won't do. You were moments from boiling in the air back there. You couldn't possibly get anywhere close to the water. Frog was dismayed. He would be cold forever. No pools to embrace him. No clothes to keep him. Well now, let's not lose heart so quickly. After all, it was that determination of yours that caught me this evening. Tell you what, I have just the thing. And Old Wisp and Frog were gliding down, down, down the mushroom stairs to the root cages at the ground level. The lugs passed through on their way to and from the pools, but imps were gathered here in great troves, preparing tea and small food things, lounging about on the great root cradles, smoking pipes and laughing. Old Wisp and Frog went further into the labyrinth of twisted wood until they came upon an open space. Frog looked up at the rooted ceiling, the base of the east tree itself. Imps here were stirring up ponds of glowing orange, pink, and red water, Colossal mushroom stalks glowing just as brightly shot up from the water into the mess of roots above, their caps hidden from view. So, that's how they got the water to the upper pools. 
Frog was so busy taking it all in that he didn't notice at first they'd stop moving. Old Wisp waved a twiggy hand at a large cauldron of soup set upon a fire at the far side of the room. A kitchen surrounded it with imps leisurely stirring all sorts of delicious smelling pots. Now Frog was nervous. Glugs didn't need frogs, but imps love food of all kind. His legs tingled with the need to hop. No need to tense up, little friend. We want to serve you, but not in that way. Old Wisp laughed in a wheezy, dry way that rang with sincerity. I've an idea, but I'll need you to trust me. Frog was shocked to find that he did. He trusted Old Wisp. The skeletal imp was warm and genuine, and he smelled familiar in a way that made Frog ache for his tadpole days. Old Wisp gestured at a short imp who scurried about, grabbing a shiny bowl from the cupboard and dipping a ladle into the soup. It filled the bowl almost to the brim with a sweet red broth and perfectly cut vegetables. Old Wisp took the bowl and brought it close to Frog. All right, little friend, try this. Frog did not eat soup. Old Wisp wheezed again. No, no, not to eat. I mean hop in. Frog thought he wasn't to be served in that way. Trust me, Frog. Aren't you cold? Frog was cold. With one last hard look into Old Wisp's eye sockets, Frog hopped over the brim of the bowl and thunk into the soup he went. All thoughts left him as his muscles eased. The broth wrapped around him with perfectly warm arms. Bliss. A chunk of carrot bumped into his leg and he came back to himself, poking his head up into the air. Old Wisp was wheezing softly. Are you warm enough, little friend? Frog hoisted his arms over the back of the bowl, his eyes closed. Good. I have something else for you as well. Wait here. Old Wisp set the bowl onto a counter and disappeared through the roots. Kitchen imps didn't spare him a glance as they bustled around. After a short eternity and warm unthoughts, Frog felt something drop lightly onto his head. His eyes blinked open to Old Wisp sitting in a rocking chair close by, a worn book in hand. The brim of a straw hat obscured the top half of Frog's vision, and he realized what had been dropped on his head. Frog had never had clothes of any kind before. It's enchanted a bit. It should help with the cold. And of course, you're always welcome to a bowl of soup whenever you visit. Frog's eyes sparkled with admiration for his friend, as he leaned back into the soup, his hat tilted lazily. He lifted a foot out of the broth, admiring the shine on his toes, and for the first time that evening, he smiled.